in the post pandemic world generative ai plus all the opportunities that we have with technology there's going to be a lot of new creative experiences that we can do in our hospital industry and that is the kind of innovation that we want to do but never miss out on the human touch the high touch uh-huh. which is basically creating those memorable experiences to our guests and transforming through our products and services welcome to innovation insights the podcast that explores innovation and all aspects of life I am taking over for Dr. Sanders today. Welcome to Innovation Insights, the podcast where we explore innovation in all aspects of life. I am your host, Dr. Yolanda Sanders. Today, we're honored to have a special guest, Dr. A.J. Alluri a distinguished figure in hospitality innovation and technology. Dr. Larry is the founding director of the Nima Colon Hospitality Innovation and Technology Lab in the John Chambers College of Business and Economics at West Virginia University. He is an academic and a visionary, blending education and industry to forge new paths in hospitality and tourism management. With a career Decorated with accolades, Dr. Lurry has been recognized by the International Hospitality Institute as one of the global hospitality noble leaders, ranked among the top 100 most powerful people in U.S. hospitality. He has also been listed as one of the top 25 most influential educators in hospitality. His contributions to the field have been groundbreaking earning him the prestigious 2022 That Cool Breakthrough Award from the International Council on Hotel, Restaurant, and Institutional Education, which is a testament to his innovative spirit and dedication to advancing the hospitality industry. Through the Nima Colon Lab, he bridges the gap between academic research and industry practice preparing the next generation of leaders with hands-on, creative thinking, and problem-solving experiences. As an associate professor, Dr. Lurie has played a pivotal role in developing the Hardy Family Hospitality and Tourism Management Program at West Virginia University, shaping the minds and careers of countless students. Today, we're thrilled to delve into Dr. Lurie's insights on the future of hospitality, the role of technology in creating unforgettable guest experiences, and how innovation can lead to sustainable and and impactful growth in the industry. This afternoon, we also have two special guests, students, Maggie McCarthy and Noah Stahlnanker, both ambassadors in the lab, who will also join us and speak about their projects. Plus, we have another guest in the background who's quite special. Um, now is his name. Hi, now. Hi, I am now. I am one of the ambassadors in the Nima Cohen Lab. Thanks for having us, Dr. Sanders. Well, thank you for joining us now. So, oh, welcome, Dr. Aluri, AJ. It's wonderful to have you and your team on Innovation Insights. Dr. Sanders, it's a privilege and honor to be part of this Innovation Podcast. We are so thrilled to be part of this podcast today. Well, we really appreciate this. Uh, And uh, we've known each other now for about five or six years. Uh, We met at iCre, and I've just been a fan of your work um, ever since meeting you. And plus, you're quite the dapper dresser, too. (laughs) Well, same here, you know. Likewise, since the time I met, I was fascinated by your work, you know, the innovation and things that you do in fashion and designing. So I'm very much excited about all the work that you do, and I follow your work as well. So congratulations, Dr. Sandra. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Well, let's start off with just hearing what drew you into the field of hospitality uh, management and specifically innovation and technology. 
Sure. Uh, so my background is computer science and information technology. So hospitality was not even in my radar. So I was not even thinking hospitality management as an area I would actually end up actually working. So I wanted to work for the top five technology companies in those days in 90s and early 2000s. It was all about Microsoft, either Google or Amazon or Apple, you know. Uh, so out of all the opportunities out there, I, I wanted to do a master's in computer science information technology. Uh, I did not like it because I was doing everything in my bachelor's in my master's. So I decided to switch to MBA, but I didn't like MBA uh, as well because uh, it was 53 credit hours at Oklahoma State uh, when I joined that MBA program. I was able to join the MBA program. So I switched the gears. I did international business studies uh, at the global uh, program, global studies program. And when I was in the program, that's when I came to know about hospitality. Uh, there was a tourism project that one of the faculties uh, asked me to do. And I said, you know what, this is cool. I want to I wanna explore tourism. And then little so I know at the point, there was a program at Oklahoma State, which is one of the top 10 hospitality programs in the, in the world at the time even now top 15 in the world, decided to take a hospitality course. And, you know, long story short, I'm here doing everything from hospitality, international business, and computer science information technology. Basically, I connected all these three dots with what I'm doing with my research and the innovation lab and so on and so forth. So uh, again, I found my niche in really connecting those dots. And that is what innovation is all about really mm -hmm. take your perspective of who you are and what you bring to the table and you how you connect those dots based on your expertise. That is so true. That is so true. And so many of our guests too have had um, just a wide range of ways that they've, their career path has taken. And, um, and we're so lucky that you found um, hospitality and technology and was able to connect those two. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Sanders. And same here. I really appreciate that I was, there was a job offer in my hands after my master's program in a software company. It was a startup, now a, a good company in California. They've done really well. But when I joined that company, I had a job offer in hand. And at the time, I was like looking at both the options. Should I go for a software company like you know pursue my dream with startups or do a phd in hospitality management and then you know obviously i selected mm -hmm. the path and i'll never regret that day where i said i want to do some things differently than a lot of the other people out there in the technology space well uh thank goodness <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, tell us about your, uh, the Nima Colon Hospitality and Innovation and Technology Lab. Um, how did this start and what are the goals of the lab? Sure. When I was a student at Oklahoma State, uh, a PhD student, uh, there were a lot of centers in business school and in the hospitality program. And that's where I was, I had a vision as a student that I wanted lab instead of a center because center was more of a location with a lot of resources and you need to be in a specific place in order for you to use the center. Then I had a vision of like, why not we have a lab that's basically hands-on and you bring your own resources, you build your own resources and it's more action, you know, where action really happens, where you actually go to the lab to make things happen. And I think since then I was, I had this vision of starting a, innovation lab instead of uh, innovation center, uh, more hands-on, more action uh, oriented, really getting a lot of new ideas established through the lab. And when I got a chance to come here and uh, develop the hospitality program along with my colleague, Frank DeMarco, uh, you know, that vision was always there. And when we went from emphasis to a major, to a minor, to an online program in 2018 is when we started the you know, hospitality innovation technology lab. And I was fortunate to have a couple of uh, advisory council members that already gave money to the program. And I shared this vision with them. And I said, hey, we have an opportunity as a major now to create innovation space. And uh, thank you for both Mike and Doug. They gave that funding to me to start this space. So it's basically a, a space that I actually designed from the scratch, not only from a furniture, uh, room and technology and so on and so forth but actually how everything like i had a kitchen space i had like a 
space for coffee, space for cultures to sit and discuss and talk about innovation. So that's how the innovation lab really came through. And we are now celebrating five years of the Hospital Innovation Technology Lab. And just in last November, we are named. Now we are Nemecolin Lab that we have funded recently through Nemecolin. Congratulations, uh, because that, that is so much work to do uh, and also within um, academia because uh, it, it takes a lot of collaboration and stakeholders and vision and then also being able to pull that vision together to get it done. Uh, Absolutely. The university is lucky to have you. <laughs> no, I'm glad I had like a great colleagues. Uh, you know, Alicia Plemons, she is also a fellow in the Hospital Innovation and Technology Lab, Frank DeMarco, and students right here. You know, I mean, we only have Noah and Maggie here, but we have 15 to 20 students in the innovation team that actually are involved in some kind of a project uh, through the lab or they bring their own projects and ideas and they work on those ideas as well through the lab here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, what an excellent learning space for students, uh, learning within the space, but then also the help and work with managing the space because they'll be doing that type of work out in the industry too. So that's excellent. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, what are the goals of the, the lab? What so, do you hope to have it do? So when I started the lab, I was basically have a vision of really fostering hospital innovation and technology across WBU and beyond. And that's exactly what mm -hmm. the place is all about. But the mission is to really bridge the gap between hospital academia and industry. So when I was a PhD student, the first time I realized the hospital industry is three to five years behind the mainstream innovation and technology. And there is a valid reason for it because hospitality in general is a people business. They are all about people. They're all about guests, right? And technology mm -hmm. has evolved at a rapid pace right now that we depend more on technology to really make that happen. So technology has become more and more important and we live in an age of AI. And I think it's changing mm -hmm. the way we do, we take care of people business. So even though we are three to five years behind, we are being very proactive and more reactive in how our guests needs to be served and how our employees should be using technology to create those experiences. And that is where the vision is to really bridge that gap with emerging technologies and emerging ideas within the hospitality and tourism industry, but how do you bridge the gap between what industry is looking for? And I think now I talk to a lot of industry, uh, C-level and V-level people, and they are more so ready and available to have our students do some technology ideas. In the past, pre-pandemic, they were, uh, they, I used to tell them like all the cool things we are doing. And a lot of the industry professionals were like, oh, that's really cool. We should definitely talk about it later on. But post pandemic, whenever I was talking about these AI projects, augmented reality, internet of things, a lot of the data projects that we do, a lot of the professionals are saying, how can we tap into those projects now? How can we integrate mm. those projects now? So there is a different mindset post pandemic than the pre pandemic with use of technology and what our lab is doing. That's good. That's good. Uh, um, yeah. What are the good outcomes of the pandemic? <laughs> Uh, oh, so as, you know, you're talking about projects um, and you're incorporating these real life projects in the lab. Would you tell us or um, would you know, your students tell us a little bit about, you know, what you're working on? Because I'd love to hear uh, what Maggie and Noah are working on. I can go and on and on with all the projects I do because every course that I teach, we have projects. Every hit lab, we have a bunch of projects working on. But I, I will let Noah and Maggie share all the cool things they're doing. You know. Okay. Okay. So a lot of what I've kind of been focusing on is a lot of virtual reality. So I came to WVU last year, and I had heard about the hit lab online as I was like learning more about the school and the program, and I was like, this is something I want to do. So I knew that I wanted to go into event coordination or something along those lines. And then I just recently com mm -hmm. completed my first internship. And I noticed that one of the areas we really lacked in was our venue like planning because we were trying to do it with a bunch of people who weren't all in the same space. 
And then we would get to like the day of the event and they're like, mm-hmm. I didn't think it was going to look like this. And they're like, well, that's what we kind of thought we all had planned. So with the lab, I've kind of been able to use virtual reality and the Oculus Quest 2. The Oculus Quest 2. Um, so that oh. most people can jump into the virtual reality world and um, be able to all look at the same venue space from um, different locations. In oh, fact, that's Maggie, cool. in fact, Maggie was showing the one of the designs actually she did just before our interview. I was looking at uh, she was basically designing an entire <laughs> entire hotel building. How you can innovate the space itself. So she had different levels separated, and all at one go, you can see individual uh, you know floors and levels and how you can combine all of them Amazing. together. And I was asking her, like, can you do something for a, actually a company that we can present this? Uh, so again, yeah. some of the work that she does on the projects is just phenomenal. <laughs> That is amazing. That is amazing. And I, and I love that, um, that you can have everyone in the same space together and experience it. Oh, really? This is like, <laughs> oh, so cool. Yeah. So, Maggie, so Noah, what are you working on? <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. So um, Maggie does a lot of virtual reality. And when we first joined uh, the Nemecolon, off channel innovation and technology lab back in the fall of 2022, we were trying to find where the gaps uh, were in the industry. And we had the opportunity, Dr. Lori took us to the Marriott headquarters in Bethesda, Maryland, and which was so interesting. It was so cool to see everything that they were doing. And we wanted to kind of understand their perspective. And so we got to this one room where they were changing the wall six inches to see how that would affect guests um, in their experience with the room. And they had a, a literal wall that they moved to see how that would affect. And we took yeah. um, this Holocaust, uh, Holocaust, HoloLens, HoloLens <laughs> 2, and, which is through Microsoft. And you can set up a virtual room and still see everything. I can see everything going on right now. And I could set up um, a hotel lobby room, which is what I did. And so you, it's a live augmented reality of what the room is now. We set up our own hotel lobby to see uh-huh. how that would affect. What, what is it? Like how to affect. Um, the dimensions. The dimensions yeah, like the, the dimensions of the yeah. room. So you can change it in live time. So you don't have to have all the, the furniture there. Mm-hmm. It's all in the reality. Wow. And one of the amazing and- Sanders is, you know, imagine instead of actually building uh, a framework for the room, you can actually have guests or focus groups actually use augmented reality, where they interact with the real world and virtual world at the same time to say, oh, this room mm-hmm. looks spacious to me. Versus if you take out mm-hmm. the inches, it look very, mm-hmm. you know, cozy and not that spacious, right? Uh, but some people like cozy, some people don't like the cozy part of it, right? So. Noah was very proactive in understanding that, hey, why not create that in augmented reality where people can actually use AR goggles and glasses and actually experience the room itself. Uh, and from there, we went to designing the rooms, designing the lobbies and changing the, all lobbies are changing. In the past, it was all about the tables, you know, dividing the customer and the front desk. But now lobbies are becoming mm-hmm. more, op- more open because now we have mobile check-in that's becoming a norm. So now we don't need actually a front desk. We need that, you know, interaction that's happening. So how we can recreate spaces like such as lobbies and mm-hmm. lowers, you know, working on those ideas on how to look at the existing mm-hmm. spaces and how to redesign the lobby spaces. And you are an expert in design. And, you and, and that's interesting. Designing part of the lobby. Yeah, well, yeah, it is, it is. And... Um, finding how humans are interacting you know this relates to sustainability because as you mentioned you don't have to um, build a space or you don't have to have individuals travel to a space to see what it um, feels or looks like would you talk a little bit more about some of the advantages um, uh, any of you uh, about uh, sustainable uh, sustainability wise? 
I mean, even with what you just, just kind of said, right, with the travel, like cutting down on all of those um, like travel expenses and all of those like fossil fuels and everything that are being used in that. I mean, with these technologies, it really is creating a collaborative space, you know, within the the internet and within these other spaces that aren't physical. So I think I think that's a huge one right there that you mentioned. And especially in event management, because there's a lot of discussion goes on through for a client and a you know and a host in order to really design a space for a, a significant event. And that can be done online before they actually agree on allow this design, allow this uh, how we have these different uh, frameworks on doing the event. And then when they're ready for the event, they can come one day before to make sure everything is ready to go as designed virtually. And with Nova's work, I think we can actually make sure guests can actually experience the room virtually before they even go to a hotel, you know? So there might be yeah. the future with Vision Pro, like what Apple is doing with uh, Apple OS, the future of virtual mm -hmm. reality and augmented reality has more so on the sustainable side, but with the AI tools and applications integrated with them, it's going to be a new dimension of how we're going to experience mm -hmm. products and services in the future. Mm -hmm. Oh, I agree. I agree. And, you know, as you were saying, experiencing like a hotel room space, I was thinking about um, maybe someone has some physical challenges and you know, they may you know need to explore what that space is like before actually traveling there and that I mean, what a great way to do that in the whole senior living um facilities yeah. i could see yeah some interface there too oh my goodness so exciting <laughs> i wonder it does does now have any comments or ideas now do you what do you think about now, virtual now reality here, like nobody's asking any question <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry now <laughs> hi now now how are you doing very good thank you wonderful what do you think about virtual reality vr is revolutionizing the industry oh <laughs> Oh, it is. It is. I <laughs> <Up> you. <laughs> that, that's what he, he's looking at you. Like, yeah, we are the industry yeah, yeah. back. <laughs> so, you know, thinking about emerging technologies and, um, you know, you're doing a lot of work on consumer behavior and uh, AI, augmented reality, the Internet of Things. I mean, how do you see these shaping? hospitality management in the future uh, right now the buzzword dr sanders is artificial intelligence and it's across the board not just the gen ai the generative ai is the personal efficiency and effectiveness is changing on how consumers adopt but more so from a business standpoint it's going to change mm -hmm. the way how consumers make their purchases and we are actually working on a new uh, project on ai pin uh, Nova is one of the students uh, in that project as well. Oh. So we are uh, testing a, a, a human product, which is uh, an AI pin, and how that's going to change how travelers and guests will actually make decisions based on it. Nova, you want to talk about some of the things you discovered so far with the AI? Yeah. Pin? So the human AI pin is a pin that you can clip on, and the goal is to try and kind of create a, a screenless uh, platform for users to use. And the way it performs, you interact by tapping it. And I think it'll really curve the industry because you can now only communicate, well, not only, you can now communicate through the pen seamlessly. And I'm thinking from an industry standpoint, if you're working at a hotel and you want to know the active guest count or the active room rate, all you have to do is interact and the generative AI will interact back with you. And it creates a seamless opportunity for um, the hotel workers. And that's we're talking just the B2B side of it. There's gonna be a B2C side of it where in the past people have used mobile phones to look at five to 10 different websites to make a decision on which restaurant to go for dinner, which hotel to book, mm -hmm. which, which offers mm -hmm. a better company to price, which offers a better quality of product. Now with AI pin, customers have everything in hand. They have like a simple screen that can come on their palm of their hand without using a multiple mobile phone they can actually ask AI pin, where should I eat today? And based on your preferences, your historical data and your real-time location and your preferences, 
it gives you the places that you need to go and spend money. And it also looks at your rewards, your benefits and your values. It will tell you all those real time things that you will never consider and which will be more so like people are dependent on that technology. Why? Because now you're sitting 15, 20 minutes or more, one to two hours planning your trip, 20, 30 minutes to make a reservation, to look at which restaurant to go. And that's all done by just a AI tool, an application oh, and point. device ready available for you. It's a drastic change on how consumers will use it in the future. And I can tell you it's innovators first that will be adopting that technology in 2024. And in very soon, the explorers will join that area. And in the mainstream, I'm not, not only talking AI pin, similar AI tools and applications will be integrated with our smartwatches and mobile phones where you won't need to actually look at devices anymore. So it's going to be hands-free and it's going to be more interactive chatbots as you go, virtual assistants as you need it. So it's a big revolution in the next just three years. And I'm thinking that is going to be a big change in how Noah and Maggie will be working in the future in the hospitality industry. But they're taking the skill set already with them. So now whenever these technologies are integrated, mm -hmm. they will be the leaders integrating these technologies, more so from a B2B standpoint, but also understanding the consumer side, side as well. Um, so it keeps the history of your data. And so let's say I had a conversation with him two months ago about how our favorite restaurant is, or our favorite dish is sushi. If I ask, hey, I'm having dinner with Dr. Aloy today, what are your recommendations? The top of its list will be sushi restaurants because it remembers those and what kind of dishes they have at the moment. Because it does use that generative AI, it tracks. Exactly. I think now has um, a perspective on artificial intelligence as well. If now I'd like to speak up about that. Now, what do you think of generative AI and artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence can curve the way we view how to view hospitality and tourism. The customization is phenomenal with the human made again. It is. Now, thank you for that uh, input. You are correct. I, I'm excited about the future. <laughs> Oh my goodness. And well, you know, thinking about the future, um, dream careers. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I will say, I actually just recently had a conversation um, with Dr. Lurie, what was it two days ago? And I came to him and I was like, you know what? I'm really enjoying all of your classes right now, like with him and with the other professor that he mentioned, uh, Frank DeMarco, the both of them, with the curriculum that we're getting here, I found myself really enjoying every single class. So it puts me at a little bit of a confusion rate with like, what do I want to do in this industry, right? So I think, um, like I said before, events is definitely would be my number one pick right now, mm -hmm. um, whether that's um, going to event coordination or something like that. Um, but I think one of the things I have figured out is that resorts is kind of where I see myself in the future. Um, not 100% sure where, but that's probably what I would say. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's great. That's great. Or you're going to have. <laughs> Noah, how about you? Yeah. So. I think they tell you to dream big. And so I think eventually I'd like to be a CEO of a hotel lodging company. I am majoring in hospitality and tourism management and management information systems. I talked to Dr. Lloyd and Frank DeMarco when I came in as just a hospitality student and they saw how I flourished with the technology and how I loved it so much. I'm with the management information systems program now. And I really love that. And I plan on getting my master's in business data analytics. And so that can take me to the next step with um, information technology in the hotel industry. And I wanna work my way up to CTO eventually, maybe CIO, and then I do think that CEO is one of my big goals. Oh my goodness. I think the world is gonna to have to watch out for the two of you. <laughs> this is great. It's gonna be so much fun to watch your careers and you know, especially with the foundation of I mean, this is really going to set you up for some opportunities that um, are going to be very special. So it's going to be fun. Please stay in touch with us too. Uh, we're so fortunate to have uh, you know students like Noah and Maggie, and because they come in here with the open mindset of 
you know, grabbing every opportunity and skill set. Uh, you know, I teach a revenue management right. class, more about data, and Maggie's in the class. And she came back and she said, AJ, I'm like revenue management so much. I'm like, I never thought of this. And then <laughs> because I make it more like a gamification and puzzles and so many new things that they discover by really exploring the right. uh, data side of it. And they, most of my students come saying, oh, I don't like data. I don't, don't like numbers. And then they start loving the class. <laughs> and, and they're like, mm-hmm. oh my goodness, I never mm-hmm. saw this skill in me. And same with Noah. The way he actually took the decision to say, I'm going to do MIS double major along with hospitality. Because if you have yeah. that flexibility with how I connected dots, that is exactly what mm-hmm. Noah is doing uh, with his yeah. master's in the future yeah. and how we want to connect the dots in the hospitality industry. Well, in that interdisciplinary aspect of education is so important. I, I remember when I was in college, oh, a, over a quarter of a century ago, we'll, we'll just say that <laughs> it was much more than a quarter of a century ago, but you were told specialize, specialize, specialize. But today with, um, life changing so quickly and being so complicated, it's really important to have that interdisciplinary uh, experience. And Maggie, I just have a feeling you're probably going to end up in graduate school too, because it sounds like you're just liking (laughs) that data a bit too much. (laughs) Yeah, we had this this Wednesday night, yeah. Yeah, I had a feeling that was probably the discussion. And when I asked you what your dream job is, when you said like, uh oh, uh oh, she's being recruited to graduate school. That's good. That's a good thing. It's a very what are some of the future projects that you're hoping to do in the lab? If if you can share. So we tend to usually do some projects with signing NDAs, some projects with, you know, mm-hmm. or uh with the teams. We did few projects that are more class centered at. Uh, but a lot of our projects right now are geared towards artificial intelligence. Uh, plus, how we can use these AI tools and applications in augmented reality, virtual mm-hmm. reality, but more so on the software side as well. We are also exploring a couple of uh, projects with our partners on how to change the staffing and scheduling part of it, You know, how to redefine yeah. how we do staffing. Because staffing has been one of the major challenges post-pandemic in the hospitality industry. And we have, uh, Nova actually had an uh, idea of an app that we uh, actually did a pitch with hospitality technology. So, so uh, we had another student, Ryan Carson, uh, who took a full-time position now. He worked on a, a app model on scheduling part of it and gamifying how we reward employees in the hospitality industry. So we've done several projects in that space, but we are getting to a point we're doing a, a bigger project uh, to really change how HR does in the hospitality industry. Uh, and more so, uh, we are all about looking at existing emerging technologies, but putting them in new context as well. So we mm-hmm. take some of these ideas that are never used. Uh, the Marriott headquarters, their innovation design team, were fascinated by the idea of uh, using augmented reality for designing, but also what Maggie did with the Metaverse demo with the Marriott. So again, we do a lot of these demos across the board, and we have clients that come back to us and they're like, we want to do it in real life. Can we make this happen? But we do some projects where we fail. We take risks. We spend a lot of time on it. And I let my students, I tell my students, there's nothing wrong in learning from our failures, learning from doing projects, whether it's a classroom project or it's a hit lab innovation project. We take risk in going above and beyond from learning it. Take risk and then come back and, oh, this doesn't really work in our industry. It's way ahead of the game. Maybe turn that into a B2B project versus a B2C. And we have done a lot of that. So a lot of the, I have a couple of patents recently I got from a design aspect of it. So I love those aspects of really coming up with new ideas and patents for software and technology. And that is something we are very excited about the future. Yeah, that's great. I mean, you just you summed up so many aspects of innovation there. Having a safe space to fail too. That's so important. Or taking existing technology and using it in a new ways. And then just new ideas too. That's fabulous. That is fabulous. Dr. Aluri, you, you've received numerous awards and you're so well recognized with um, the hospitality and tourism industry. Uh, 
you know, you did receive the 2022 McCool Breakthrough Award. What was what did this recognition mean to you? Because that is a big award given by the Council on Hotel, Restaurant and S- Institutional Education. So tell us about that award and your thoughts about receiving that. Thank you, Dr. Sanders. Awards are always great. I was actually surprised when I got an email from ICRI saying that I was nominated, but also selected for the award. And I don't pursue for the awards. I don't really do things to win awards or get recognized. But those are definitely some things that motivates me. Uh, I mean, I want to take you to a different side of why it motivates me. Noah will uh, appreciate these examples. We were doing a demo for Marriott. We are setting up a demo of an augmented reality and we have a bunch of technologies in a big boardroom, a bunch of screens with a team of people app students doing it. And all of a sudden, the augmented reality device, we could actually present it. I, we couldn't really, uh, we could not put it in a system to actually show that. And it took hours and hours for us to really do it and we could actually do the demo. And we went with the flow and said, let's do it. We had, we actually hosted iCre Lino conference here at, uh, at our business school. And wow. we were programming now. And for some reason, when we were testing now, one of the students in the uh, team changed the language setting of now from English to Japanese. And we didn't realize that we need to speak Japanese for us to actually translate it to English. So I was sitting in my office three hours with the customer technology support for now and trying to figure out without resetting the now, because we had a lot of programming we did with them. I was telling him, I don't want to visit that device. I wanted to change the language setting. And little so in that three hours of time I was working with now, I realized that we have to do a reset. So we ended up doing a reset. But three, you know, a lot of technology is only good when it works. A lot of people just mentioned that. So my time, and then I, Noah and Maggie will agree, we spend a lot of time behind the scene, really testing our technologies, making sure it works. And sometimes you need those motivations, right? When you're sitting in, Three hours mm-hmm. trying to figure out how to fix this technology, how to put together yeah. a demo, you know. So I would say, personally, those are the things that motivates me. Like, hey, mm-hmm. I'm doing something new. I need takes time behind the scenes when you work on technology and demos and ideas for you to do a lot of behind the scenes. In the front, yes, we will probably involve some other people. Presentation, we'll do a lot of things. But behind the scenes, there's an hours and hours of work that goes into it. That's not even, you know, people notice it. So these mm-hmm. awards are only a testament to some of the work that I do in the front, but a lot of the things I work with our students. Mm-hmm. We spend hours and hours in our hit lab sessions discussing ideas and they go back to their team. They spend additional time. And a lot of the students are voluntarily working on their project. They're not here just to get paid or, you know, just to get funding, but they're here mm-hmm. to really develop a skill set. And I think I move on. I get these awards and I move on. I always looking for what's next for me, what's next project for me, what's new idea for me. I sit with, you know, we were talking this morning about the AI pin and some of the areas that we can do frameworks, new frameworks in doing research projects. Uh, we are cu- we're getting this device very soon to really work on the idea of doing a demo in April. So we're preparing for a April demo of that product, but also an application. So we have only one and a month left to really work on it. So really do a demo. So a lot of things go behind the scenes and these awards and recognition is only personally and professionally is only a motivation for us to do more. Well, uh, I can't wait to see what else you do because you've done so much in such an early part of your career. It's so exciting. And as you're thinking about the industry and academia, how do you stay ahead? How do you start to understand, okay, this is the needs. This is what's happening in hospitality. This is where we need to go. This is what we need to study in the lab. No, that is a great question, Dr. Sanders. And this is one of the things when I came here to start the program, when I shared this vision to Frank and I, as a team, we were looking at, we need to change the way our curriculum is done. We need to change the way we prepare our students because our goal is to prepare future business leaders in hospitality. As simple as that, how to really make that happen, to be relevant, to be current, to do projects that are relevant for the industry, right? There's a lot of academic foundation that I focus on, but that is only a foundation. 
based on, I built that foundation very early on in a lot of my classes, but I take experiential learning projects to go beyond the classroom, to go really beyond the academic setting. Uh, and in our program goals, when we looked at our program goals, we always focused on leadership, number one, because we want to build business leaders. Number two, we always focused on human skills, because if you don't focus on human skills, we won't be able to prepare our students in the hospitality industry. Then the third one is operations. We focus on having operation center. More so as we prepare Nova or Maggie, we ask them which area you want to work, which department and functional area you want to focus on. So we prepare students to tell them, hey, know the operations of the industry and pick the area that you really want to be an expert. And as you move on, you want to take that mm -hmm. knowledge across all of the departments and functional areas. But we added two more in 2020, right after pandemic. And one of them is entrepreneurship slash entrepreneurship. And the other one is technology. So we have five goals of the program. And the entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship and technology is because of the innovation lab, the new Berlin lab. And that really sets our program apart from all the other hospitality programs out there because we are more student-centered. We are more mm -hmm. industry-specific. We are more about applied wisdom. We are more about impact. Mm -hmm. And that has changed our mm -hmm. focus on how to place our students. We have 100% placement in our program because of that, because we require internships as part of our program as well. And more so, some of our success stories from our alumni are they are getting into a B-level less than five years. They're getting into a V-level within that after five years. So we, we saw general managers come out of a program already. You're only 10 years old as a program, just 10 years old. And wow. Imagine the kind of success we are seeing uh, within our students. So that's, we are so excited about that. And that is gratifying more than anything else. When you see our students go out there and really a testament to our program. Well, students are the best part of higher education. <laughs> they Absolutely. are. And oh my goodness, 100% 100 placement. Woo, that is impressive. Congratulations on that. Yeah, and thinking about students, uh, what's some advice that you would give to students or young professionals that want to make their mark in hospitality, especially in innovation and technology areas in hospitality? I focus a lot on creativity skills. Creative skills are something that we make sure the students are getting through the innovation lab, but also in a lot of our classes. Again, thinking outside the box, thinking differently than a lot of the other students out there, uh, you know, just focusing on grade, just focusing on uh, a, co a, a final exam. You know, we, we take that away from the student's perspective. We make sure they focus on beyond the classroom uh, mindset. In doing so, I think there are three things that are very important. Like I said before, motivation. You need to have some personal motivation because innovation happens because of individuals motivated or teams motivated to do something different and how they take it to a wider audience and make it a phenomenon, make it something real. But there's also expertise, and that's what we talk about operations. That's very important. You need to have an expertise in a specific area of your work, and you need to take that expertise at a level that if, you, if anybody's talking about that specific area, they should tell, go to that individual. They know A to Z in that area. And that's what I tell my students. Be operation-oriented. In that specific area of operations, you should be the person. You should be the person in your organization or industry. Then the last thing is the creative thinking skills. And these creative thinking skills only comes as you go connect the dots like I did in my education. But more so, I always, one of my Clifton strengths, one of my first strengths on Clifton strength is learner. I'm always about learning. Not about outcome, but learning things. Really going out there, really looking at what's happening with you technologies, new ideas, but also innovating that in hospitality and tourism, but also adopting personally to these new way of thinking, right? So these three think skills, the expertise, the motivation, and creative thinking skills is only going to get you to become an innovator. And innovation more so as an entrepreneur, if not as an entrepreneur, because you can use somebody's money to do innovative things as well as an entrepreneur. So I teach my students be an entrepreneur or entrepreneur, but that's the kind of mindset you want to have in the program. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. <laughs> okay. 
Um, so within the hospitality industry, what are some challenges and opportunities that the industry is facing that innovation can help address? I think we are in a stage right now, it's going to be a different way of thinking is needed in our hospitality industry. In the past, uh, if you look at where we are as a economy, we are always in the experience economy, right? Experiences are very important in hospitality. But within the experience economy, uh, Dr. Sanders, we saw three different innovations happening. Number one, sharing economy, right? Sharing economy has changed the consumer behavior of platforms, like having a platform just in a mobile to experience everything, to put things within the platform instead of really making it complicated. And that challenged a lot of the hospitality industry sectors that platforms are becoming a place where people love actually booking the 360 degree journey in one place, right? After the sharing economy, it's the creative economy that really changed hospitality. And more the creative economy is all about people are looking for creative ideas of products and services not just a traditional product and services. Our industry was lost the track on making everything same and similar to really now changing how we can add creativity in the products and services. And that has drastically changed mm -hmm. the way of consumer behavior and creative thinking. Now we are in a transformative economy, which is a, all about memories and value. Creative economy is all about co-creation of value. And the trans transformative economy is all about creating memories in the post-pandemic world. And people are looking for those opportunities through hospitality products and services. Mm -hmm. And that are the challenges that we are facing in our industry. So how we can do innovation, how we can bring those ideas of sharing creative thinking and transformative economies in our hospitality industry to change the way we offer our products and services to our guests. And that is a, one of the major challenges we are having in the world of AI, because artificial intelligence has a capability of changing that through automation, whether unsupervised or supervised automation. Noah and I, we're working on some areas with now where we do supervised experiences. Sometimes we use now where we're getting into unsupervised, where use of AI. And now yeah. Noah is actually working on Python and uh, Java Plus and C Sharp, where he is actually looking at back end of now, how to redesign it. So now can go any, to any hotel, any restaurant on its own and ability to really speak and talk without even me and Noah being there, right? And that is the future of where AI can really, yeah. AI can do a unsupervised automation that was only a dream in the pre-pandemic world. In the post-pandemic world, generative AI plus all the opportunities that we have with technology there's going to be a lot of new creative experiences that we can do in our hospitality industry. And that is the kind of innovation that we want to do. But never miss out on the human touch, the high touch, uh -huh. which is basically creating those memorable experiences to our guests and transforming through our products and services. <laughs> this is great. So eventually we're, there's going to be many nows around helping our experiences. There will right. be many nows, but there will be many tools and applications behind the scenes, right? Not only something that we can see, some things that we uh -huh. probably have for an AI thing. Now, uh -huh. you have anything to say about future of robots or future of AI? That's right, Dr. Allery. Greatness of innovation is not a return to currents. Like you're trying to run error to everyone persevere. Good. Wow. Well, good, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> that was how to, you know, surprise us, you know? It sure yes. does. Oh, oh my goodness. Question. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, well, I, I have a last question that I would like. All <laughs> it sure does. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, well, I, I have a last question that I would like all four of you to answer, actually. The question is, how do you define innovation? Who would like to start? Maybe you want to set the stage here. Yeah. Now? Maybe now. Oh, yeah, maybe now can talk. Maybe it. now can talk about it. That's the now. Hey, that's about it. Now, what do you think about innovation? In the realm of health in general, innovation, soon across the immigration, recruiting edge technologies to elevate guest experiences and operational efficiency. 
I like that now. I love the operational efficiencies too. Oh. That yeah, that's me now. Answer, you'll be featured on the podcast and have your own little clip. <laughs> You made it. You made it. You made it. You made it. You're ready. You're ready. Who would like to go next? I can try. I can try and build off Nal's explanation. I think innovation, at the end of the day, is just seamlessness through technology. So we have ideas, meet industry, and efficiency. So once you connect all of those, that's what innovation is. It's connecting everything to make it seamless. Uh, Seam seamlessness for guests, for internal guests, for anybody coming to the industry. And I think innovation. Yeah, I think that, that's, that's, that's why I really Yeah, that's a good one. I'll just say, I definitely build off of that too, because I like what you said about seamlessness. But I think, at least in my experience and what I've learned here at the university and everything, the idea of taking a look at situations and finding issues within it. And then trying to attack those issues by making it a more seamless experience and thinking of new ways to help those issues in a different light that hasn't been thought of before is probably where I'm going with that. So those are great. Now and now, Nola and Maggie. Yeah, yeah. that's really cool. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's very. That's a good point. I think. Point. Good. Yeah, <laughs> like just finding not even like issues that are occurring, just. Things that could be elevated. Inefficiencies. Yeah, just inefficiencies at the end of the day that could exactly. be elevated through technology to benefit their overall experience. Yeah, I love your perspectives on that, both yeah. of you. That's really great. And I love the dialogue between the two of you, you know, discussing it. And um, yeah. Team effort. That's team effort. <laughs> yeah, definitely team effort for sure. From a broader perspective, I always think innovation is all about transforming human experiences. And I think whenever we go back to technology or non-technology, because innovation need not be technology, it can be non-technology as well. As simple as changing a process, changing your methodology, changing a, a, a level of operation, and then making it very seamless and simple like what Noah and Maggie are talking about. But more, it has to be should change the human experience. It should transform the human experience. And uh, that is where what we are seeing with artificial intelligence right now. In the past, it was tools and applications, but now it's transforming how we use them, but how we use that information on a daily basis. And that is where transforming human experiences is what innovation is all about. And making human life more memorable is the most important thing. And because we all live on memories. We all live on some of the memories that we take with us, personal as well as, as, well as professional. And keeping that from an innovation standpoint is what it's all about. Wonderful. <laughs> I, you know, it's, it's so wonderful because sometimes people, when they you know, think about individuals working with technology, is that you're not thinking about the human, but all of you have discussed how important the human interface and how technology can enhance that. So I truly appreciate that. So that brings us to the end of another enlightening episode of Innovation Insights. We've had the privilege of exploring the forefront of hospitality innovation and technology with one of the most influential figures in the field, Dr. A.J. Aluri. Dr. Lurie, thank you for sharing your invaluable insights, experiences, and visions with us today. Your work is truly inspiring and sets a beacon for future innovation in hospitality and beyond. Maggie McCarthy and Noah Stallmaker, thank you for joining us and sharing the projects that you're working on, your insights, your definitions of innovation, and how do you see technology really not only helping with operations, but with um, the human experience. To our listeners, we hope today's conversation has sparked your curiosity and opened your eyes to transformative powers of technology in creating memorable and sustainable hospitality experiences. The future is bright. It's leaders like Dr. Lurie light the way. <laughs> Dr. Sanders, thanks. Thank you once again for having us. We had a blast. We had a really a blast doing this. Oh, yeah. yeah.
Yeah. Do you have any last words for Dr. Sanders? Thank you very much for having all of us, Dr. Sanders. We hope you have a wonderful day and a great weekend. There you go. Don't forget to follow us on your favorite podcast platform to stay updated with the latest in innovation, technology, and the minds that are shaping our world. If you enjoyed today's episode, please share it with your friends and colleagues who are passionate about the future of hospitality and innovation. And thank you for tuning in to Innovation Insights. I'm Dr. Yolanda Sanders, and I'm signing off until next time. Keep innovating, keep dreaming, keep making a difference.